Assalamualaikum, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us for the Camping Gear Workshop tonight. My name is Scott Irfan from the 39 Second Tony Muslim Scouts. Um, I'll be taking you through this presentation. I've run this for the last few years, and hopefully for those of you that are new here, we'll get some information out of this and, and take something away. And for those of you that have seen this presentation before, hopefully there'll be something updated on there um, that will help you refresh your memory or, or knowledge about uh, camping. So jumping into it, um, if you have any questions, uh, you can go to the uh, Slido website that we have there and input the code. Any questions you have, we'll answer at the end of the presentation. Um, the topics that we're gonna cover uh, are pertain specifically to fall and winter camping. Um, we're gonna go over tent basics. While the group will provide tents, this is just for your information. Um, so you can take something away from here and learn about it if you wanna go purchase your own tent. Um, the most important section that we're gonna cover today is the personal gear. So clothing, footwear, other items, uh, and your sleeping bag. We'll go over the packing list, um, as well as uh, safety tips and things to absolutely avoid. So the tent basics, um, as I mentioned, the group will provide tents. You can bring your own if it is suitable for the season. Um, there are various different types of tents, and we'll just cover uh, sort of the basics of, of the different ones that you need to be aware of. Um, I'll be speaking a lot of vocabulary, so um, there is a specific anatomy of the tent that I want to go over so you're familiar with the different items. Um, you have the tent body. Uh, which is comprised of the pole, um, the mesh, the stakes, and then you have the rain fly, which goes over the body, um, which essentially has guy lines, which are these long strings that go into the ground to hold it taut. Um, and then you have the vestibule, which is the space between the rain fly and the tent um, to store your gear, typically in winter tents. And then you have the tent footprint, which is the tarp that goes underneath the tent. Um, so types of tents, we're going to look at two specific ones. The first thing I have is a question um, that I hear a lot. People go, you know, winter tents are warmer than three season tents. Is that true or false? Um, that's the myth. Tents do not retain heat, but rather keep wind out. And that's what helps um, with, with winter tents rather than three season tents is that they, they keep the wind out so that you're not getting as cold. Um, so a three season tent essentially is suitable for spring, summer, and fall. Uh, they're affordable, lightweight, easy to set up, lots of ventilation to prevent condensation, and they cannot really withstand a lot of snow or heavy wind. Um, those are the majority of the tents that we have. Um, I think that exact one that you see on the screen there. And then you look at winter tents, which have stronger poles, extra guy lines, additional poles and support structures, they're durable exterior walls and deeper bases. Um, the slopes are steeper to um, help with uh, snow um, and extra space. Um, and then the vestibules uh, assist with storing your gear and keeping it somewhere dry. Um, they also have less ventilation to cut down on drafts. You'll also notice that there are skirts on the bottom of that fly, which help keep the wind and snow out as well. I just want you to take a look at this picture and notice the different types of tents that there are. You'll see the, the ones on the, th the three on the right there are um, winter tents or four season tents, while the one on the left is a uh, three season tent. So you can definitely see how the wind would get into the one on the left, while the ones on the right um, would definitely keep a lot of the wind out and you would be uh, warmer inside. So personal gear and clothing, um, think like an ogre. Uh, you want to have layers. You want to have layers like uh, an onion or like an ogre, whatever you prefer. Uh, so you will see what I mean here shortly uh, when we go to the next slide. The, the basics are three layers. Um, you have your base uh, underwear layer, your mid warmth insulation layer, and your outer shell barrier. We'll go through each one of the layers here. Um, your base layer essentially is designed to be moisture wicking. And what that means is it takes the moisture, the sweat from your skin, and moves it away from your skin through the material and out and evaporate. Uh, the reason for that is to ensure that the um, sweat on your skin does not get cold and freeze, which results in your body trying to stay warm. That's really what gets you cold, is your body constantly fighting to keep warm. It can't keep up because of all that condensation. Um, and you end up feeling cold after that, going into hypothermia. So really the base layer, the thermal layer is designed to do that. Um, and the key thing about the thermal layer is that it needs to be tight to the skin. If it is not tight and it is loose fitting, it will not be moisture wicking and you will result in just having a lot of sweat and condensation on your skin. Looking at the materials associated with the base layer, um, like I said, it's for moisture management and keeping dry. Um, materials you really wanna look at are uh, synthetic, uh, merino wools or silk and uh, thermal specific um, materials that are designed for it. I think the, the most uh, affordable and realistic ones are synthetic and merino wool. 
Um, I absolutely love Merino wool. A lot of my gear, my thermal gear is Merino wool. Um, Costco sells a set of thermal gear um, for, you know, I think it's 20 bucks uh, for the top and bottom. I think they have it for the youth as well. The other item you also want to remember uh, for your base layer is socks. Uh, socks are very, very important. I have a pair of Merino wool socks for the summer and I have a pair for the winter, a thick pair and a thin pair that I will show you later on here when we get to my gear. Um, the mid layer, this is for insulation, for retaining heat um, and trapping the air inside, making sure you can regulate that temperature. You know, if you have a zipper, you can open and close it, regulate your heat, um, ensuring that you're not overheating or getting too cold. Um, again, great material for this is merino wool or uh, goose down polyester fleece. Goose down is a bit more expensive. I think really, realistically, the good middle ground is merino wool um, from a... Um, uh, sort of performance standpoint and uh, a cost standpoint. Polyester fleece is definitely the cheapest one, but it does not perform as well. Um, going on to the shell, the outer layer, uh, weather protection, there is a difference between the two. You have rain versus snow protection. You can see the different types of jackets and pants there. Um, the idea of the outer layer is to keep um, the weather off of you, be it you know uh, snow or rain. Um, it needs to be waterproof, it needs to be breathable. Gore-Tex and uh, Event are two very sort of expensive high-end materials. You really want to, at the end of the day, look at nylon. I love um, clothing that is you know, three-in-one or two-in-one. I actually have a new jacket here that I can share with you that I got from Columbia that is a two-in-one. Um, so you can see that it has an inner layer that uh, kind of looks like a, a foil material, but it doesn't feel like that. It keeps you very warm, keeps you insulated. Um, and then there's a zipper here and you can separate the, the layer from the other layer, depending on however you want to sort of um, what temperature you're dealing with. The outer layer is waterproof. And so this is a jacket I can use in numerous seasons. It's great uh, to have these types of jackets. It'll save you a whole bunch of different clothing um, you know, you can just sort of move around between the seasons with just one jacket. So looking at boots, um, the most important thing with your boots is really the, the, the bottom part of it, the sole and the grip. Um, the thicker the sole, the better cold protection. A lot of the cold, contrary to popular belief, comes from uh, the ground. A lot of people think it comes from around the boot, but it's really coming from the ground up. Um, so if you have a thick sole, um, it'll keep your feet very warm. You keep your feet and head warm and you're going to do just fine out in the cold weather. Um, rating on the boot means the grip underneath. So you really want to make sure that you have a good grip. Um, getting an interchangeable liner or thick wool socks is a good idea. I use thick wool socks. You don't really need a liner. You want to make sure the boot is waterproof. You can get a spray to waterproof it, or you can just buy a pair of boots that are already waterproof. Um, the other thing is ankle protection. So there's a difference between winter boots and, and hiking boots. Winter boots are sort of big, bulky, insulated. Um, they don't have the best ankle protection. I mean, it's there, but at the end of the day, they're designed just to keep the snow off of you when you're trudging through high snow, while hiking boots have better grip and have that firm ankle support. So troop and above, you absolutely need hiking boots. I will send you home if we're going on you know, uh, a medium or advanced hike and you don't have a pair of hiking boots because... I can't, you know, the troop cannot afford to have you get hurt halfway through on a, on a two, three hour hike, twist your ankle, and now we have to carry you out of there. So the risk is pretty huge. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've seen somebody twist their ankle or get hurt because they don't have the right type of shoes on for the activity. Uh, moving on, uh, personal gear. So we've gone over base, mid, and outer layers. We've gone over rain versus snow jackets and pants. The other thing you really need to have is a toque or a thick head scarf. Some of you like earmuffs. Sure, great. Wear earmuffs. Keep your head warm. Um, gloves are super important. Um, you can see in the photo there that I have a pair of the really thin ones and then the thick ones wearing, again, think onions, even for your hands. Um, I have a pair of gloves here that I'll show you. Um, if I could find them. Oh, here they are. So these are my inner layer gloves. I typically wear these 99% of the time. Um, they're great, they're thin and they're warm. Uh, they're easy to do stuff in. They're not bulky. And then if it's really cold and we're going on a hike, then I put my um, winter glove on and now I'm nice and toasty in there. So two pairs, you can even get the cheap cloth, you know, like a little, uh, um, I think it's like a wool pair of gloves, really thin ones. You don't have to break the bank here to, to do any of this. So, and then the other thing that I want to address is uh, an extra set of clothes. We had an incident recently at one of our camps where a youth went on a hike with us early in the morning. It was really cold. Uh, they did not have a set of clothes and they fell into the lake. 
and uh, we had to improvise to ensure they didn't get hypothermia and get them back to camp. So um, don't worry, that's not, no, it wasn't one of the younger sections, it was the older section of the vents, um, but it was certainly a lesson learned. Always please have an extra pair of clothes. Uh, you never know when you'll need it. Um, getting into the other items, uh, hand sanitizer and masks. Everybody should already be used to this and have uh, hand sanitizer and masks on them. Um, lip balm is also great to have. Nobody likes cracked lips. Um, sunglasses, these are great, especially when it gets colder and it's snowing outside and you have the you know, sun glare bouncing off the snow. Um, but you wanna keep your eyes protected. A good non-leaking plastic bottle, okay? Please ensure you have a plastic bottle because as it gets colder out there, if you have a metal bottle, it's gonna get stuck to your tongue and that's not gonna be a very fun experience. Um, indoor shoes, uh, be sure to bring a pair of indoor shoes. You'll need them for inside the cabin. Um, some of you are okay with Crocs. I absolutely love Crocs. They're great, they're fantastic. Um, if you prefer those, you can get a cheap pair from Walmart. Uh, or if you want running shoes and you wanna stay completely dry, you can do that as well. Plastic utensils, a uh, plate, a mug. Um, that's for your own cutlery, including your own cutlery. Um, get a mesh bag with that. It's easy to dry after you've washed it. Um, here's my set. I'll show you my set. I don't have a mesh bag for this. I wish it did, but um, so here's my, my cutlery set. I have sort of a, a, a knife, spoon, fork kind of combined in one there. Um, and then it comes with the, the plate as well as a couple of expandable um, cups that I can use or soup or any hot drink or so. Um, and then I also bring my, um, my uh, mug to, to have hot chocolate in, which is separate from all this, it has a lid on it. Um, so really those are the items you need to bring for uh, other personal gear. Um, jumping into sleeping bags. Uh, really the first question is, what kind of a bag am I buying? Am I buying a winter bag or a summer bag? What kind of temperature rating am I looking at? Um, and then the other question is your loft index. Um, the higher the loft index, the more heat is preserved inside. Um, the three things you wanna really consider are comfort rating, the waterproofness and the price. Uh, there are three key types of bags. You have summer bags, which are zero degrees and higher, three season, which are minus 10 to zero and winter, which are minus 10 and lower. So I'll show you the two types of bags that I have. Uh, so, this is my minus 30 and below bag. You can see it's much larger. Um, this is my uh, negative 10 bag, I believe it is. So it's a three season bag, smaller, but um, I mean, they're fantastic. They both work great. Uh, I would recommend that you buy the, the colder bag, the cold weather bag, and then, you know, sort of sleep on it in the summer um, instead of going for multiple different types of bags. Um, so there's, Specific types of bags I want to introduce you to the, in terms of styles. There's two particular ones that we're going to look at. You have the mummy bag, you have the rectangular bag, semi-rectangular and double bag. Double bag, that's great for family camping. You're not going to need that here. Um, the mummy bag and the rectangular bags are the two types that uh, we really want to focus on. The mummy bag boosts warmth and uh, cuts weight. I love mummy bags. All my bags are mummy bags. They're fantastic. They keep me super warm and snug. Um, rectangular gives you lots of room. Um, and it can be open to use as a comforter, but again, it's not that great in terms of heat retention. And then you have the semi-retangular or the barrel, which is sort of a compromise between warmth and roominess. Going to the two different types that I really wanna focus in on here are the mummy bag, which is efficient quick and quick heat distribution, smaller in packing size. Um, the cons are that there's less room for feet, difficult to toss and turn, less roomy. Um, when you're turning in these bags, you're really turning with the bag, you're not turning in it. Um, you sort of have to get used to that. Uh, it comes with a hood as well, which is great because it gets snug over your head and keeps you warm. Um, again, when you're using these, be sure to tighten everything to keep that heat in. Um, rectangular bags have more room for comfort, easy to toss and turn, um, more feet and arms uh, room, uh, but they're not that great for heat retention. Uh, there's a lot of empty space in it and they have a bigger size overall. So they're larger to carry. Um, going through the different performance versus price comparison, um, we have two different materials. You have down and synthetic. Um, down is the, the best when it comes to heating up um, in terms of performance. And then packing size is it gets down to a really small size, um, but it is terrible when wet and it is expensive. So you don't need a down bag. Um, both my bags are synthetic bags and honestly, they work fantastically. 
Um, in terms of performance of the synthetic bag, it is normal heat up time. It's not the quickest. Um, it's a bit larger when you pack it, but it's great when it's wet and it is also cheap. So you don't really need to get a down bag unless you're doing a lot of camping and going up, you know, into the mountains with your family. Um, but otherwise, the synthetic bag will work just great. I think I saw one at Mountain Warehouse for Youth. Um, I think it was a minus 10 bag for about 60 or $70. So they're quite, quite affordable. Um, some other things associated with a sleeping bag. So you have your sleeping bag hood. Um, a lot of bags already come with this. And the one thing I recommend is when you get in your sleeping bag, I see a lot of youth scouts, I'm talking to you, uh, cubs. Um, you get into your sleeping bag and you don't put the hood on. Get that hood on, tighten it, tighten every rope you have because the idea is you want to keep the heat inside. You want to have as little skin exposed as possible. Right? How many times I've seen you toss and turn and like half, you're half out the bag in the morning and you're wondering why you're freezing, right? Get yourself tucked in there and make sure you're snug. Uh, stash pockets, they have little pockets usually around the chest or on the side. I usually keep my phone in there, whatever you want to do. Um, you want to keep something close by. Uh, stuff sack, uh, there's a difference between, so that is not a stuff sack. That is just a bag to store it in. Stuff sacks are the ones on the screen there and they essentially make it more compact and easy to transport. Um, one thing about your sleeping bag, when you store it, it's not a good idea to store it in the bag. You want to keep it open because what that does is it damages the fibers in there and it loses its shape and the zipper gets messed up. So when you're storing it at home, open it up, put it under a bed or something, you know, up in the attic, in the basement, wherever. Just keep it somewhere that'll stay open and nice and fluffy. And then a sleeping bag liner, um, a soft liner that can go inside the bag. You see one on the screen there. Keeps it warmer and it's easy to clean. So you don't have to worry about washing your bag. You can just wash the liner. Um, and then uh, next slide, I think, talks about carrying. No, not yet. So, okay, these, these are important key tips and tricks that I want to talk about. And everybody should pay attention to this. Everybody goes to bed wearing like 16 layers, okay? That's a terrible idea because, again, remember what I said at the beginning? It's the sweat on your skin that makes you cold. And if that sweat can't escape, it's going to freeze. It's going to freeze. Your body's going to struggle to keep you warm. So, you want to sleep in a dry base layer. That is like the go-to. Even mountaineers that go up in like minus 50 degrees sleep in just their base layer. So that's your top, your bottom, your socks, and a hat. Socks and hat are very important. What you want to do is take that other gear off. And as long as it's dry, shove it in the bag. You know, those empty spaces, get yourself nice and tight and cozy in there. And the great thing is when you wake up in the morning, those clothes are warm and you don't have to worry about clothes that are freezing to put them on. You're like, oh my God, I don't put that on. Stuff it in the bag. Okay, it's great. It'll keep all that airspace out and ensure that you stay nice and warm. Zip up your sleeping bag all the way. I'm going to mention this so many times. Ensure it's zipped up the entire way. Yeah, it's a bit of a struggle sometimes. Just get it done. Get somebody in the tent to help you out. Make sure it's closed at the bottom and the top, okay? Wear a toque and socks. When you sleep, you absolutely need to wear a toque. A toque is so key. Uh, socks will help a lot, but your, your head is fully exposed. That's the one part of your head is the one part in a sleeping bag that's fully exposed. So make sure you have something on um, that will keep your head nice and warm. And then tuck yourself in and tighten the drawstring around your chest and head. A lot of people miss those. There's a string right here and a string down here. And that just tightens it here, tightens it here, keeps you warm. Okay. Next slide. So cleaning and care. Um, a lot of people like to just leave their sleeping bag smelly. Don't do that. Uh, wash it. Not, not often. I mean, you can do it once a year, twice a year, uh, depending on how much you use it. So gentle non-detergent soap, hand wash in a bathtub. If you have a front loader washer, you can put it on a gentle cycle. Um, air drying is honestly the best in the summer. You can tumble dry it with no heat. That might damage it at times. Um, you can add a tennis ball to you know, help the clumping in there or one of those like blue balls you have for the dryers, whatever they are. Throw them in there and just have it sort of help break apart all the fibers in there. Sleeping insulation. So I mentioned this before about your feet, your shoes. Most of the cold comes from the ground below you, not above you or around your back. Everybody goes, I'm cold, I'm cold, because you're sleeping on the ground. You have nothing underneath you. So one thing I'm going to recommend you absolutely, absolutely purchase, you can get this at Mountain Warehouse, you can get it on Amazon, you can get it wherever you want, is one of these, okay? It's a sleeping track pad. You can get them up on sale for up to 10 bucks. It is one of the best investments you will make. It's, a, it's comfortable. The aluminum side goes down on the ground and that reflects the heat. Okay. Um, if you want, you can get an air mattress as well. I like having a foam air mattress. Um, so you just open it, it auto inflates. That's optional if you want it, but I would recommend, highly recommend the Trek mat. So going into personal gear. Uh, just do a time check here. How am I looking? 22. Okay. I'm good. Um, so this is the packing list that I shared with everybody. Um, and I'm just going to go through it. 
um, sort of, I'm going to see if you can, I'm going to put some things up on the, on the screen or bring some things up here. So if you want to make the video of me a bit bigger or whatever you want to do. So sleeping bag, as I mentioned, for this camp, you want a bag that has a rating of um, at least zero. Minus 30 would be great. It'd be super cozy, a bit pricey. But realistically, all of our camps are in the fall, winter, and spring. We have some summer camps that we go to for the older kids. Um, sometimes we do actually have cub camps there in the summer. But really, you can just sleep on top of your sleeping bag at that point, really, if you want. So my recommendation is to get the cold weather bags and just use a blanket or something else to, you know, when, when it's summertime. So troop scouts should have either two bags with a rating of zero or one bag rated up from minus 30. Everybody else, um, because typically winter camp, we'll discuss that when we get to it, but um, troop and above are going to be doing a lot of winter camping outside. So sleeping pad, absolutely, like, I mean, I cannot stress this enough. It'll make a world of a difference. Please ensure you have a sleeping pad. It's one of the most essential things to keep the cold away from you. Uh, headlamp. Extra batteries, make sure you have a headlamp. It's super important moving around camp. There isn't much lighting. Um, the lighting is just around the cabins. We have lanterns sometimes scattered around the place, but a headlamp is essential. Reusable water bottle, we mentioned that plastic. Personal utensil set, um, plastic, including fork, spoon, knife, cup, bowl, plate. You can have all those things. Um, I don't have a mesh bag. I wish I did, but this is essentially my kit here. So it comes with a little chopping board, my spork, spoon spoon knife everything in one um a couple of like mugs that i can make bigger so they kind of like fold it down and i fold them out you got a little mug there okay and then the actual plate that i use so that's my kit just so you understand you get an idea of it personal medication don't forget that um matches flint and steel uh this is optional for cubs troop i expect you to have it um, some of you cubs already have it. What's flint and steel? That's flint and steel, okay? wonder if I should be doing this in the house. Probably not a good idea, but you're lighting fires with that. Okay, and then matches. I always keep matches in a Ziploc bag with some dry lint. You're always throwing away that dry lint. You have no idea how valuable it is to a scout. It is like gold to a scout. We'll start fires immediately, okay? First aid kit, optional for cubs and beavers, again. Uh, troop, I expect you to have your own personal first aid kit or small first aid kit. You can pick these up quite cheap. You know, that's a bit bigger one. I think this is for up to, yeah, this is a group size one. And here is a personal one. So just get a little first aid kit. You never know when it'll come in handy. Carry a couple of band aids. Um, inflatable travel pillow. Some people like comfort. Go for it. I usually just take my clothes and shove it into the little pillow that's there in my sleeping bag. And then a flashlight. That's optional. Make sure you have a headlamp. Flashlight is optional. Okay. Uh, personal hygiene. So keeping clean, hand sanitizer. Everybody must have their own personal hand sanitizer. Cannot stress this enough. Masks are necessary for when you're indoors. So bring a couple. If you have a cloth one, that's great. You know, the three layer cloth. Uh, toothbrush, toothpaste, um, soap, and biodegradable. So biodegradable soap, there's a lot of different ones coming out that are now antibacterial, but this is the typical one you'll see is camp soap. Okay. Biodegradable. We're going to be doing a lot of our washing outside. So make sure you have that. Um, we will try and obviously provide you with soap and, and different things, but if you have your own, it's always good to just, you know, keep contact to a minimum. Um, lip balm, as I mentioned, face wash your towel. So I have a towel, I have a camping towel. You don't have to bring a massive towel. You can bring a little tiny face wash towel, but this is my camping towel. And it is like the most, it's honestly magic. Um, it's the size of a regular towel and it soaks up more than my regular towels. Like, but it opens up pretty quick. It opens up pretty big and dries up pretty quickly. Okay. So. It's fantastic, has a little clip, you can hang it, dry it. It'll dry in literally five to 10 minutes. It's, it's honestly magic. I don't know what the heck they make it out of. Um, and then comb if you want to keep your hair fresh, that's up to you. Uh, I think the girls, it's more important for you to, you know, kind of keep the, the knots out of your hair. So um, other, you can add anything else you think is necessary for you to take for personal hygiene. That's your option, it's your prerogative, okay? So clothing, waterproof bag or dry bag. So this is a really cool piece of gear. And a lot of people, like I know Scott, Rebecca and I were talking about it at the last camp. She swears by it. And I do too. After literally I had this on the first camping trip I ever went on and I never, once my bag fell in the water, I, I, lo I love these things. Okay. Keep all your clothes in here. They'll stay dry, moisture free. They won't get super cold. Um, and the best thing is I use this as my pillow. So I have all my clothes in here, I put it behind my head and I'm off to sleep. 
Okay, so dry bag, great, great piece of gear. So this is like a 20 liter one. That's enough for a grown adult like me to carry for, I've used this for a whole week long camp. So, you know, you can, you can survive with a pretty small one. Uh, full scout uniform is required for camp for opening and closing. Uh, so we'll need it um, for the Saturday morning and the Sunday closing ceremony. So the opening ceremony is on Saturday morning. Uh, you need to have, you need to figure out how many pairs of underwear, thermal socks, shirts, and pants you need. Really, you need a pair to wear for the weekend uh, in terms of your, your trousers and your shirt with an extra pair. Um, you want to bring more undergarments and socks. Okay, bring lots of socks. Socks are important. Okay. Um, winter hat, again, important. Akela made sure that I had this one on display. So repping the queen there, I guess. Um, sweater, having a fleece sweater. So here's my sweater. It's a merino wool one and it's great. It's super warm, cozy, has a hood on it. Okay, here's another one you can use. This is more of a sporty one, keeps moisture off of you. So if you're going for a long, the clothing. Um, fall and winter jacket with hood. So I showed you the jacket I had. Fall and winter gloves. So my gloves, as I was mentioning earlier, so I have my winter gloves here. They're a bit busted up. Don't mind that. But here are my thermal gloves. Okay. So these are very thin and I keep these on pretty much the entire camp. The only time I'll put on my winter gloves is if I'm at any point, you know, messing with snow or we're going for a really, really long hike and it's windy, but these are super, super warm. And I just keep these in my pocket. They're great. Uh, what are we going through here? Sunglasses, um, hiking boots. We've gone through our boots, indoor shoes and sandals. We've gone through that as well. So additional miscellaneous items, uh, more in Turba. I have a, a prayer mat that's <clears throat> small and travel size, right? You can just bring them more if you want. You can pray under the sky, whatever you're comfortable with. Spare batteries for headlamp. I can't tell you how many times people go, I got a headlamp, but there's no batteries. Well, that's kind of useless then, isn't it? So make sure you have spare batteries. Garbage bag. I always carry several garbage bags with me. You never know when they come in handy. Um, either if you get wet and you need a spare pair of clothing, garbage bag will keep you warm. It'll work as a tarp. There are many uses keeping your wet clothes in there. Ziploc bags are good to carry as well. Um, rope. I always carry a bundle of rope. Okay, so now I'm going through these things here that are optional. These are more for troop and above. Troop, if you're listening, these things are sort of essential for you to start to carry with you because when you get to the venture level, these are the items that are going to save you when you need them, okay? So beavers, don't worry about so many of these items in terms of the optional. Um, the recommended ones that I, I recommend you carry. Uh, camera, compass, whistle. I always have a whistle on me, right? Three blasts is an emergency. Um, Emergency blanket, we, I just used mine for the first time this last camp we went to. So that's one little packet silver blankets that fold into this little tiny size and then they come out and they're huge. And they're great for retaining heat. Notebook, pen, pencil, entertainment. Bring a book, halal card games, okay? Board games, whatever you want, nothing too big. And then a campfire blanket. And for those of you that are not familiar with the campfire blanket, this is a Kayla's campfire blanket that she's working on still. So campfire blanket is a blanket you take and you attach all your patches and badges that you earn that don't go on your uniform, but go onto your campfire blanket. And it tells a story of your journey as a scout, okay? So that's the campfire blanket. Did I miss anything on there, Kayla? No, okay. Um, signaling, so whistle, that's important to carry for emergencies. If you get hurt, if you get lost, three blasts, somebody will come help you. Bright colors, I always wear red and orange. Everybody will see me in orange gear. Um, you wanna make yourself visible and big. Um, if you get separated from the group, if we're on a hike, hug a tree. We will backtrack. Notice at the next, we'll do a check at the next count how many heads. Oh, we're missing somebody. We'll go back the way we came. We'll find you hugging a tree. Okay. So these are just some tips you need to keep in mind. Look at the difference here. So you got guy number one and guy number two over there. And if you go to the next slide, look how much easier it is to see guy number two in the trees there with his orange, right? You don't even know guy number one's there. He's falling in the snow. He's gone. And nobody's coming for him. Okay. So. Safety tips in terms of staying warm. This is kind of a summary here. Dress in layers, think onion, keep dry, especially your outer layer. Consume high calorie foods. Don't worry, we'll take care of that. Um, double seam bag systems are great. So you can have two zero degree bags and you can share them with family or just use one in the summer. Clothing, tuck in, zip up. Tuck in, zip up. I'll be screaming that all weekend. Um, hats or two to prevent heat loss. And then if you get separated, you can start a fire to keep you warm. 
um, or use it as a signal. Again, this is for the troop and above level cubs. I know some of you beaver and cub parents are freaking out and out. Don't worry, nobody's going to get lost. We all stay together. Um, so the last thing is the things to absolutely, absolutely, absolutely avoid is cotton and jeans, loose fitting inner layer, um, poor water resistance and poor wind protection on your outer layer and metal utensils. Okay, so these are the five things. If you're going to take anything away out of here, take these five things. All right. I just want to quickly show you my layers here. So I have my thermal. There's my thermal pants. Okay, the tight fitting. Then I have either a fleece mid layer, or I have these tracks, which are super quick dry, depending on the weather, how cold it is. And then I have my camping pants, which are waterproof, which I wear on the outside. These are just the wind barrier, essentially. Okay, so that's essentially how you should be dressing. In terms of socks, I mentioned I was going to show you. I have two pairs of socks here. Once this, so here's my here's my thin summer merino wool socks. Okay. And these are my thick merino wool socks, really cozy. Okay, my grandpa loves these. I gave him a pair and he absolutely adores them. Costco has them, different sock stores. There's a great Canadian sock store downtown. You can go to Mountain Warehouse, Bass Pro, wherever. Any outdoor store will have it. Okay, moving on. So I know a lot of you are dubious. A lot of your parents are new. You're worried. Camp is awesome. Camp is a lot of fun. Kids have a great time. Don't worry. Don't stress. We're not going out into the boonies. We're still only like half an hour to 40 minutes away. Okay, here are some shots of just everybody having an amazing time. Um, that was a Quincy that was built about oh, five, six years ago. And uh, the girls actually slept in there. The troop girls uh, slept in there all night. And it was warmer than outside. I remember that night was a minus 13 or minus 17 night. I was freezing and waking up every two hours because I was super worried about them. But apparently it was like eight degrees in there, but minus 13 outside. So amazing experience, okay? I gave everybody a quick reference handout. Um, it's there in Scouts Tracker. It's there in the WhatsApp. Use that packing list to get you through. There are some tips and locations that you can go through in terms of where to get your outdoor gear. Um, some quick charts there to reference the type of material for your sleeping bag and the essentials of your layers. Um, just, just a quick reference guide that you can use if you want to have a recall in a day. Okay, so we'll jump to the questions here if there are any that I haven't answered, Akela. What's the time looking like? Oh, I'm doing good on time. Okay. Okay, so let's go through. If it's cold, Salams, if it's cold and rainy weekend, are there any options to postpone the camping trip? Um, unless there's like a tornado going through, it's unlikely that the camping trip will get postponed. Um, we have we have canceled camping trips in the past where there's been winter storms or weather that's just really severe and there's warnings out there. Um, rainy, we're gonna stay dry. Um, the tents stay dry if every, everything's set up properly and everybody has the right gear. We do have cabins there to warm up in. So the only challenge with COVID is that we can't put everybody in the cabin and we'll get into that topic here next. Will scouts be outside the entire time? Also, please recommend a brand of sleeping bag to purchase. So yes, the scouts will be outside the entire time. You might go in to use the bathroom. Um, if, if it's a really cold, you know, somebody's got wet or something, we can get them inside to warm up, but we don't, we can't have more than a certain number of people inside the cabin at a time. Okay. Um, this is the brand I use, Eureka. It's like a, a cheap to medium brand and I honestly have no complaints. It's worked great. This bag has lasted me. I mean, I'm pretty sure I've had this other bag since 2012. So it's lasted me almost a decade. Um, the bigger one I bought recently. Okay. Um, do we need to purchase hiking boots? Uh, if you are troop and above, yes. So that's 11 year old and above. Yes, hiking boots are mandatory. I will send you home if you show up to a hike and you don't have ankle support. That's the biggest thing about hiking boots is the, is the grip underneath and the ankle support. I can't tell you how many times a twisted ankle on a four hour hike has ended up ruining everybody's day. Okay, so please, yes. Uh, do the cubs need a bag for their belongings as well as backpack or is backpack itself sufficient? So when you say backpack, you're probably talking about like a school backpack. This is what I use. I think this is a... I want to say a 40 liter bag. No, it's more than that. I can't remember. 80 liter. This is an 80 liter bag. Okay, so this is great for an adult. And I like to carry lots of random things that I probably will never use. But if I have them in the event of emergency, I'll be happy. Typically, youth can get away with a 35 liter bag. 
Okay. And the reason a, 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 one of these bags is so great is it's got great support. Okay. On the back. So you're not going to have them hurting their back. It's, it's got nice firm, um, like metal plates going here, a nice, uh, waist, uh, cushioning. And then it's got zips. It's got zips on the top. They have little pockets. They can put things in that they want for quick access zips along the side. If you have your socks at the bottom, you know, you pack a certain way. So I would recommend getting, you know, a, not an expensive, you don't need to get an expensive bag, just get a decently cheap bag, find one on sale. Um, a backpack would probably work for this camp, but as you get up into the advanced levels, yes, you will need a, a, a sleeping, uh, sorry, a camping bag. A sleep, is a sleeping bag necessary if they have a thick warm sleeping bag? Yes. I'm just going to leave it there. Yes, it is. What are the sleeping arrangements given COVID rules? So we're going to talk about that in the next presentation. So I'll just hold on to that one. Uh, don't forget sunscreen. Yes, great. Yes, sunscreen is good. Um, UV protection. Thank you for reminding me. Um, what should we pack everything into? What type of backpack? So I just showed you there the type of backpack. If you have a regular backpack, I mean, use what you have. Um, don't go out there and break the bank for it. Um, just essentially, I, what I recommend is, is try and get everything into one bag. If you have multiple bags, it just gets crazy and you lose things. And, you know, uh, one, one thing I would, I would recommend, and you'll see this on all my bags, is I have a million of these carabiners. They're fantastic. You can get a pack of like 10 from the dollar store and you can just hook all kinds of things to it. I love carabiners. Michaela's finding them all over the house. Okay. Um, are Sorel boots waterproof? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm guessing that's a brand. I'm not familiar with, with that. Um, but whoever that is, you can reach out to me privately. Maybe we can figure that one out. Do we need a day pack? Uh, a day pack is good to have. You don't necessarily need one for this camp. Because um, if we go for a hike, it's going to be a short half an hour to maybe an hour hike at most. I doubt we'll even go that long. Um, you'll need to carry your water bottle. But yeah, it's always good to carry get into the habit of a day pack. You don't need anything too big. So like my day pack is over here. I'll show you. How am I doing on time? 8.40. Okay. This is my day pack. It's pretty small. Um, yours can be much smaller than this. I mean, if you, if you really want to carry something for a short hike, bring fanny packs back. I don't know. They're pretty cool. Everybody's shaking their head. Oh, Akela is showing me the Sorel boots. Um, I think they would be. They look like they have a rubber bottom. Um, I'll, I'll have to look into those, the Sorel boots. Okay. Where could you find a whistle? Uh, Amazon, that's where I bought mine. I bought a pack of two from Amazon for I think like $3. <laughs> They're really cheap um, and they work great. Make sure to write your name on it, okay? So you don't lose it. Do we need to bring sandals? Um, no, I would recommend for your indoor shoes, you bring running shoes. Uh, sandals, you can get wet sometimes. I, I, I just, I'm careful with my Crocs, so running shoes. For beavers, is there a necklace light instead of a headlamp? Um, no, get them used to using a headlamp um, because they can. it sort of stays with where they go, right? Um, you don't need to buy an expensive one. You can get a pair of two from Canadian Tire for like 30 bucks with the batteries. Uh, it's two headlamps. Uh, I mean, if, if you're an adult and you want to essentially get a, a decent headlamp, you know, you can go out and buy one that has all these fancy things on it. It's magnetic and this and that, but you don't need to break the bank again for that. Um, any more questions? No, that's it. Okay, so that's it for that presentation. We're going to go and move on to the COVID one next. If you have any more questions, um, you can put them again into um, Slido. I'm just going to drink a water here real quick. Okay, so getting into the new normal. This is the heavy topic. <clears throat> Scouting has changed. Um, we're all coming back into, you know, physical events and being together again. And it's a challenge for everybody from the workplace to school, to madrasa, to your daily lives. It's the same for scouting. So we're sort of working through and we're doing our best. And what I wanted to show you here today is how 390 Scouts is going above and beyond the Scouts Canada mandates, okay? So jump into the next slide. Um, let me skip that one. So the current COVID stage, um, is, is stage four. And what that means is the size of gatherings allowed in shining waters is follow your local provincial guidelines. Patrol. So patrols are groups of eight youth. Uh, it could be lairs for cubs or lodges for beavers um, where eight youth are mingling and doing their activity in that group of eight. They don't mix with other youth when they're, using, when they're sharing equipment. Okay. Um, that's really the key thing there. 
Camping, all sections may camp overnight indoors or outdoors in patrols only. Large buildings are not permitted. Tents or shelters preferred. So they say indoors there, but in the interest of safety as a group, we have decided that we're going to stick to the outdoors and use the cabin only for you know warming up or if we need to use the bathroom, um, if it's too cold for Salah, stuff like that. Okay. Uh, Scouts Canada has a mandatory COVID-19 full vaccination policy. For those that are new and have not seen that, it applies to all eligible youth currently age 12 plus, adult members, participants, and staff. So that's something that if you're not familiar with, you can go and find out more about that. Um, so looking at the stage four, what I'm going to go through here is the requirements that Scouts Canada has, and then the check mark, the check mark underneath that is what, what the 392 Scouts is doing. So Physical distancing, all scouting, in-person activities will be limited to the gathering with certain specified municipality or province. So we're separating all of our activities um, for the sections within the parameters of the municipality. Like I said, we're splitting into patrols. We're avoiding contact in between, um, limiting contact between uh, smaller teams. So I'll be getting the smaller teams, patrols, lodges, layers, expedition teams. So we've already done that. We've split the youth into sections. Um, into patrols and we'll be conducting activities from social distance positions within the patrols only. So the patrols will never mingle. Even the sleeping arrangements, which I'll get into here shortly, um, we're not mixing the patrols. So essentially the patrols are gonna be boys and girls. Cleaning, um, ensure that appropriate levels of hygiene, cleaning and disinfecting were realistic, but also were planned and executed. Um, so the youth are to pack, so some of the things we're doing, youth are to pack personal alcohol-based hand rub. We have procedures for wiping down shared use facilities. We're gonna have Lysol wipes everywhere. You know, if somebody's using a sink, the idea is they grab the Lysol wipe, they wipe it down, they throw it away and go. Um, any aerosol generating activities, such as brushing your teeth, we're gonna be do, doing that outdoors where possible. Now, if it's hurricanes, gale force winds, maybe we'll just go into the um, bathroom one at a time, but where possible, the troop and the vents will be outside, the cubs and beavers will adjust based on the weather, okay? Hygiene, hand washing stations or alcohol based rub, hand rub with minimum 60% alcohol concentration must be made available, soap and water preferred. Um, our group camps have already a, uh, they already have sinks available at these, at these camps, um, for hand washing. Um, we will provide soap dispensers at the sinks. We will have alcohol gel at different locations. Youth are also required to bring their personal size alcohol-based hand rub. Okay. And screening. Everybody goes to the self-assessment. We're trusting you to be honest, um, and not putting everybody else in harm's way. If we do notice any symptoms, we will send you home, okay? I know there are certain people with allergies and whatnot, so we're aware of that. Your section scouters are aware of those allergies and you know, we'll, we'll, we'll sort of assess based on what we see. Um, emergency response and risk management. So there are certain plans and adventure application forms that we have, they've been updated. They've been authorized by the, so they've been prepared by myself or the section scouters and then authorized by the group commissioner. So we've gone through those procedures. Food provisions, this is the, the tricky one that we've sort of been thinking about. Um, and so they're saying no to self-serve buffet style meals. For anybody that's seen photos of our camp, you have the food laid out, you know, you're putting in everybody's plate, this and that. Um, and, and they want us to clean and disinfect eating and cooking equipment after use. So meal preparations, including prep, will be limited to the patrol in charge of the meal. They will be masked up. Um, they will be monitored for sanitization of the equipment and themselves before use. Uh, meals will be prepared and eaten outdoors where possible. Uh, so if the weather is great, inshallah, we will be doing everything outdoors. Um, cleaning of equipment remains the same. We've always had an, a rigorous cleaning process where we have a three bin system. So we have soapy hot water, um, Clorox uh, in, in one bin, and then um, a, a uh, just fresh water to, to rinse it down. Uh, Nafisa, I saw you raise your hand. If you have any questions, please put them into the uh, Slido so I can get to it here at the end, just being cognizant of time. Moving on to the next slide. Um, so overnight camping. Colony, pack, troop, company, and crew overnight camping is allowed if permitted by local relevant municipal and provincial regulations. So they are permitting camping in the York region area. Um, the requirements from Scouts Canada is camping in tents or shelters is preferred. Sleeping in hard sided tents and Adrian DAC shelters is permitted in patrols of up to eight. That was what essentially that is, is like a big structure with one side open. Um, large buildings, halls, or other facilities cannot be used for overnight accommodations. Adults, including parents, are required to sleep separately away from the youth. Sharing of tents is permitted within patrols. Again, that's the group of eight that will just be, you know, doing stuff amongst themselves. If a patrol, se if patrol separation cannot be guaranteed, all camping or overnight accommodations 
all camping or overnight accommodation to be conducted individually in tents or appropriate camping shelters. And so again, we're moving to just the tenting um, approach here. Uh, that's why we've limited the beavers to just the day program, the cubs to one night. Um, if you have any concerns in terms of the overnight, you can always speak to, to either myself or uh, Kayla about that. So going to the next slide, um, the sleeping arrangements. What we're doing at this camp is all youth will be sleeping outdoors in tents. The tents are ventilated with mesh screens um, while the indoor cabins are not. Leaders will also be sleeping outdoors in leader tents scattered among the youth uh, within earshot. I barely sleep at camp. I'm pretty sure all the other leaders can say the same. They barely sleep, they're always awake, you know, keeping an eye out. Um, the youth have been allocated tents, which they will share with those who are within their patrol or family bubble where possible. So we've been donated about 20 tents recently or close to 20, maybe 15. Um, we're gonna be using every single one of our tents. Uh, we're trying to spread the youth out as much as possible. Um, there are some groups uh, such as the troop who we have put together into one tent, but it's a large tent. It's like a six person tent and we have three people or four people in there. Um, and again, they're ventilated and have breathability in them. Youth are permitted to bring their own tents if they wish, um, as long as they're suitable for the weather and the youth knows how to set it up. Okay, so if you have personal tents, if you have family tents, by all means, bring them. Just make sure you know how to use them and that they are waterproof and have a fly. Uh, because they, I don't know how I'm not holding an umbrella all night above your tent to keep you dry. Okay, so here are the sleeping arrangements. On the left side, we have the cubs, then you have the scouts at the top and the vents. Um, we've split everybody based on their patrols. They're going to be in um, majority of the three, the three groups of tent one, like tent one, tent two, tent four are in large four person tents for adult size tents. They'll be spread out in there, again, with ventilation, with the mesh there. Um, and then we have the, uh, the scouts, uh, you see some of the Amina, Khadija, Malika, and Nita, they're, they're in a larger tent, the six person tent, um, so they don't have more room. So we try to accommodate the best we can based on the number of tents that we have available to us. Okay, there are a few that are bringing personal tents. Again, you are absolutely welcome to do so. Okay, so that essentially concludes that presentation. Um, we'll go to see what questions we have, but we don't have time here. Yeah, 10 minutes. Fantastic. Okay. Do you have to bring your own food? Good question. Um, no, the group will provide you food. And actually, on the topic of food, please do not have any food in your tent or your backpack. Uh, there are no bears here, but there are raccoons, <laughs> and raccoons are vicious. Uh, so please, if you bring something that you want to have as a snack, by all means, bring it, put it in a bag, a Ziploc with your name on it and say, hey, Scott Irfan, Akela, here's my snack. I want to have it later on. Can I please keep it somewhere safe? Or we'll keep it inside for you where it is out of harm's way, okay? Any other questions? Oh, do the beavers need sleeping bags? Um, no, the beavers are not there overnight, so they don't need sleeping bags for this particular camp. Um, it's likely that we will not be having the beavers do any overnights just yet. We're going to see where this sort of vaccination stuff goes and, and what the government does with it. Um, it's just really challenging to have such young youth um, sleeping overnight. Uh, we want to make sure that you know we're being realistic and doing things within our control. So that's, that's uh, they don't need it right now, but they will eventually, um, inshallah. Any, any other questions, Akela? Is that it? You can hit the, oh, here we go. Salam, the list isn't clear on what the beavers need and don't need. Okay, so essentially the beavers, all you really need for them is their clothing. Um, the same layering applies, having outdoor and indoor boots. Um, they're going to need their utensils. They're going to need a flashlight because they will be there for campfire. Um, they'll need a water bottle. And because they're not staying overnight, I mean, personal hygiene wise, uh, sanitizer, a mask, um, that's really it. Um, if, if you have a beaver and you're, and you're new to the, the program, um, feel free to reach out to me and I can go through the list with you. Um, we can figure out what specifically you need. Okay. Can we bring flashlights to the headlamp? I honestly, headlamps are, I, I would almost say almost mandatory. Re realistically, like 
um, your hands, when your hands are free and you're doing a hike, it's just easier to do things. Headlamps are just so much more convenient when you're on the fly and on the move. So I would recommend headlamps over flashlights. How long will Cubs sleep? The Cubs will be there one night, Saturday night, leaving Sunday. Okay, so the Cubs and Beavers arrive Saturday morning. Troop and Vents will be there Friday night. Everybody, uh, the Beavers will leave Saturday night, and then the Cubs, Troop, and Vents leave Sunday. Okay, do kids need vaccination proof? So if you look at the Scouts Canada website, they have an FAQ. They are going to set up a self um, self declaration of vaccination on your My Scouts profile. They're going to be setting that up. I, I think they have a date there. I can't remember the date, but they're going to, we're not going to be the ones asking you to prove vaccination. It's going to be done through your profile. We will be able to see that just as you put your allergies and medical conditions of your youth, same, same uh, sort of scenario. If we do not like the food that you give us, what do we do? I mean, you're welcome to make suggestions, but realistically, it's the youth that come up with the menu. It's the youth that come up with the program. It is a youth-led program. So they decide really what they want. The vents are planning the menu this time around. The troop and cubs are doing their activities. Um, you know, I, I don't know how to help you there. It's, we can tell you what the, the menu is, but if there are certain like allergies or allergy restrictions, uh, per se, we, we make our, our camp a nut-free camp, so there is none of that. Um, but if there are other allergies, you can always have a conversation with your section scatter about that one. What time should the troop arrive to camp on Friday and leave Sunday? Um, I think arrival time in Scouts Tracker, if you take a look at it, is 7 p.m., I want to say. Is there a form to arrange carpooling? Um, good question. I think it's a matter of uh, you reaching out to any of the parents in your section. We don't really have a group chat um, for for the entire um, all the parents in the, in, the, in the committee. So you could reach out to them on on Facebook or look you know look for somebody you know in the in the announcement group that uh, you can speak to. Um, if you don't know anybody, again, reach out to your section scouter and they should be able to help you get in touch with somebody based on where you live. Can we can we choose how we sleep with? Can we choose? Oh, can we choose whom we sleep with in tents? No. Essentially, we are assigning it this time around because we need to make sure that you are staying within your patrols and not crossing between the other patrols. So that's the answer to that one. Is it too late to sign up for cub camping? Yes, unfortunately, we're past our deadline. Um, we've had to do all the food planning and. Um, the uh, the accommodations and everything else uh, as well as book the permits for the camp the tents and the the campsite so we're, we're pretty past that uh. my child is five years old in the beaver group is that too young for the all day camp it would be a long day it's i mean it, you gauge how 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 much your child can endure um i'm not going to tell you that all beavers are the same and that they can all take it the majority of beavers are comfortable they a lot of them do come for the overnight camp and they're there you know from sometimes from the friday to the sunday back before covid so they've been able to manage um there is a lot of rest involved for the beavers the programs are pretty easy you know they sit around and do some crafts they're not they're not doing hour-long hikes with everybody if we do a, a an hour-long hike for the troop the beavers will walk 15 minutes and then they'll come back with their leaders so we, we sort of base it based on, or gauge it and, and adjust based on the, the age of the uh, section. If you have, again, any specific concerns, um, you can reach out to your section scatter. I'll be sharing it. Akela, could you just go back to the presentation real quick? Um, the last page of any one of them, I think. You sharing? I can't see anything. It's frozen. Uh, I'll redo it. Okay, so here are the contacts for your sections. Um, Sabri and Andrea K. Hawkeye, uh, Ferzin is Akela, myself for the troop, and Rebecca for the company, the vents. 
Um, I would recommend you save those numbers, take a photo, whatever you want to do. I'll share this presentation with you as well. Um, those are your key contacts, your contact scatters for your section. If you have any specific questions about your youth in that section and anything that you think they might struggle with or any spe special recommendations um, or requirements that you may have, um, you can always reach out to them. Um, if you're unable to resolve the issue with them, then you can reach out to me um, as a group administrator and I'll see what I can do to help you out. Okay, Did any more questions come in here? What time? We've got two minutes. Okay, so I finished on time, which is great. Um, I'll, like I said, I'll share the presentation for the camping gear with you. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or your section scouter. Like I said, if it's something to do with the program or the camp and what, what they need for the camp, um, you can reach out to your section scouter or me. They, they're all you know well knowledgeable and, and know what's required. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm always available if you need to have a conversation or are unsure about something. Um, with that being said, thank you all very much for your time. And I hope you took something out of this presentation and, and uh, were able to, to learn a bit more about the outdoors and, and what you're going to need. But uh, looking forward to camp, inshallah. We'll see you all next week because we do not have a meeting this Friday. Thank you very much. And uh, khudafis.